Number six, don't drop your weights. Now, unless you're trying to prevent an injury, dropping your weights is almost never acceptable. The loud noise cuts through the gym like a sharp knife and rattles the eardrums and patience of the other gym members. Now, if you can lift it up, you can place it down. Bent over dumbbell rows and, of course, deadlifts are the two biggest offenders that I've seen. Now, these two exercises are great for building overall body strength, but for some reason, it seems a lot of people forget the importance of a controlled eccentric motion in generating that strength. Now, unless you're training for a powerlifting meet, when performing the deadlift, the barbell should be slowly lowered to the floor, barely making a sound when it contacts. Now, if you are training for a powerlifting meet, then the local gym probably isn't your best fit for you. If you do need to drop your weights, I would suggest finding an appropriately equipped powerlifting, Olympic lifting, or CrossFit style gym with bumper plates and lifting platforms. You can make all the noise you wish in these types of gyms as they're built around the sport. Now, I'm guilty of this type of lifting as well. However, I do my best to limit it to within the confines of an appropriate gym. Respect the atmosphere of your gym and don't drop your weights. Also, remember that you end up getting stronger in the long run if you focus on the control of the eccentric phase or lowering down of the deadlift. Number seven, allow other members to work in with you whenever possible. Now, the gym can get busy, especially if you go during peak hours right before and after the nine to five workday. So as such, there will be times when another member or two would like to use the same piece of equipment that you're using at the moment. There is almost no reason why someone else should be able to use the equipment with you between your exercise sets. Even if you're doing heavy sets of barbell squats with 400 pounds and the other person is only able to do 100 pounds, the amount of time that it takes to strip the bar and load it again is so short, it'll be selfish to consider a reason not to let them work in. The gym's equipment is paid for by the membership dues of all the members, in effect, making it belong to all members equally. Allowing others to work in with you whenever possible helps improve the environment of the gym and can create new friendships among members. Number eight, don't circuit train in every corner of the gym. Circuit training is an excellent way to get your heart rate up and get the most amount of exercise done in the shortest amount of time. I love ending a lot of my workouts with a circuit as it helps burn the last little bit of energy I might have before I finish for the day. Try to pick an exercise that you can perform within a relatively small footprint of the gym floor. In other words, don't be running all over the gym, in between members and equipment to get to the next exercise of your circuit. This will just annoy those that you narrowly avoid while running past them. It will also make it more likely that the equipment that you select becomes taken up by other members while you moved on to the other side of the gym for the next exercise. You should be able to accomplish a circuit within a relatively small area and with minimal impact on the other members members around you. Number nine, don't use equipment improperly or come up with new ways of using it. The human body is an incredible machine capable of unbelievable physical performance. Even still, it is a delicately balanced network of bones and tissue meant to accomplish work through specific ranges of motion and body patterns. The likelihood of injury when performing physical activity is relatively small when bones and muscles are working under manageable load and the joints are healthy and mobile. Conversely, when joints are not healthy and mobile and when the body is forced to perform exercises in unnatural and jerky movement patterns, the risk of serious injury to muscles, ligaments, tendons, and bones exponentially goes up. This is called, well, it's called jacking your shit up. And unfortunately, I've seen it happen on more than one occasion from members using equipment in a clearly wrong way. A quick search for gym fail on YouTube will demonstrate some of the ways that you should not be using equipment in a gym. A good rule to follow is if you don't know how to use something, ask a member or the gym staff. Alternatively, many machines have graphics on them showing the proper way to use it. Failing those two options, and if you still don't quite know the best way to use something, leave it for a time in the future when you can either hire a personal trainer or ask one of the other gym members how to use it properly. Please don't decide to guess the best way to use the equipment. And most importantly, do not under any circumstance come up with your own unique way of using a machine clearly designed to be operating in one way and one way only. Number 10, learn the best way to spot someone and ask for a spotter if you need one yourself. Go to the gym for a long enough time and it's inevitable that you'll be asked by some other member to help out by spotting them through an exercise. What is this spotting you ask? Why it's the subtle art of not allowing the weight to crush the member to death should they not be strong enough to lift it back up. Those doing it for the first time usually panic and overspot. That is, they help the weight back up more than is necessary. The member who asked you for the spot likely feels confident enough that they can get the weight up, yet is cautious enough to know that they could run into trouble and a spotter such as yourself is just a good insurance policy. When you spot someone, ask them how many reps they expect to get, as well if they have done this weight for that amount of reps before. Ask them how they prefer to be spotted. For example, during an incline dumbbell press, would the person prefer to be helped from the elbows or the wrists? They'll definitely not be mad or think you're incompetent for asking a few questions. In fact, they'll be happy that you're so concerned with helping as best as you can. In general, it's a good rule to have your hands close but not touching the area of the bar or the area of the body from which you'll be helping. Most people hate it when you touch the bar or place your hands on their elbows before they need actual assistance as they may feel cheated from a good rep. 
Have your hands close by, but don't apply any assistance until it's entirely necessary. Now, a few of these rules of etiquette might seem obvious. A few may have never crossed your mind. Just remember that the gym is a communal space where people, much like yourself, go to work on achieving their goals and creating the healthiest versions of themselves. It's important that you and the other members work to create a space that serves as an enjoyable and uplifting environment by keeping it clean and free of clutter. If you see someone else disregarding the house rules or not following proper gym etiquette, feel free to enlighten them in an appropriate way and time. If you like. However, don't become a gym police officer. It's my opinion that leading by example is the best way to help others adopt a similar practice of respect and etiquette and serves to keep you on the good side of others. No one likes to be called out for their actions, so tread lightly and focus on your own good habits and behavior in the gym. So thanks again for joining me today. If you got something out of it, I sure appreciate a like. If you know someone who gets something out of it, please feel free to share or do both. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.